If I'm not back in two hours, you know what to do with her. Good luck, love. Thanks. charged and pleaded guilty to fraudulently and with full knowledge that you were committing an offence, convert to your own purpose and use sums of money amounting to £30,000, being monies due to the company known as the Sunsbury Estate and Mortgage Company, of which you at the time held the position of managing director. It was, in my view, right and proper that you should plead guilty. And I've turned a good ear to what I've been told by learned counsel appearing for you in that have already repaid the money you stole. It is, however, my duty to pronounce sentence upon you. Have you anything to say? Well... <coughs> no. Um... May it please your lordship, I would like to uh, ask the court's indulgence to allow me to say a few words in the defendant's favour in the hope that uh, your lordship might be persuaded to mitigate whatever sentence your lordship might have in mind. Very well, Mr. Berridge. We've heard very little from you during this case. As you can see, my lord, my client is no ordinary criminal off the streets. He's a man who comes from an excellent family background. He uh, has wealthy, titled parents and a high academic schooling. He had an exceptional career at the university and an even more outstanding military service in a cavalry regiment. He was in fact awarded the Military Cross for gallantry on the Normandy beaches. Upon demobilization from the cavalry in 1946... <laughs> He arrived home from overseas to the Dyer House, which had been given him by his family on his 21st birthday. Only to find that both his parents had been killed during a bombing raid while staying at their Knightsbridge apartment in London and that he had inherited the entire Wingate estate, valued at that time at nearly three million pounds. Master Giles, glad to have you back, sir. Glad to be back, friend. And how are you? Very, very well, sir. Good. You're looking younger than ever. Thank you, sir. After you, sir.
You remember Clara, our cook, sir? Of course I remember Clara. I'm nice to see you again. And uh, the maids are new, sir. Where did you find these girls? The village? Yes, sir. Amazing. Good heavens. I must have known you when you were all just a little... <sighs> Tiny things. It took very little time for the handsome young bachelor to savour the pleasures of civilian life and on an unearned income of several thousand pounds per year, he was able to give very careful thought to the methods in which his newfound fortune should be spent. Many long hours were spent in meditation over his wealth of business ideas. But first things first, and Giles Wingate's army experiences had given him a commendable sense of class equality. It offended him to be waited on by uniformed servants, and he promptly ordered his staff to abandon their uniforms for something a trifle less formal. and uh, to adopt a less formal... Oh, Bolly, the morning, I say... ...relationship oh, with their master. I know what you want all this on for. Mmm. That can come off there. One member of his staff, however, called Polly, and a brazen, fortune-seeking wench, if ever there was one, took advantage of the young Wingate's democratic socialist ideals and within a few weeks became the first Mrs. Giles Wingate. From that moment, Polly embarked on a spending spree never before equaled. In one day, for example, she purchased from one London store 11 fur coats. She consumed 31 sports cars during one year. Needless to say, with young Wingate down to his last two million, the marriage ended in divorce. After Polly the maid came Tania, the so-called movie actress. She came to stay for a weekend, bringing one of her films with her.
My client, seeing his guest suffering at the hands of gangsters on the screen, was so moved with compassion and pity, he asked her to be his wife. Three months and 500,000 pounds later, she took off with a homosexual actor and has never been seen since. From the publicity accrued from this tempestuous romance, Wingate became the target for every cunning, gold-digging wench in the country. And as fast as these women moved in, so my client married them one after the other, making in each case a vast settlement on the um, injured parties. Then came a stenographer, Mary, who was so transparently after her employer's money that just anyone could have seen through her. Nevertheless, she became Mrs. Wingate number five. Oh, uh, was it six? Marianne, a dancer, who soon stripped Wingate of 20,000 pounds in alimony as efficiently as she stripped herself of her veils. And um, Ingeborg, a Swedish masseur, who by her highly skilled training in the manipulation oh. of the human body, oh. Ow. extorted, oh. among other things, oh. Oh. a promise of marriage, which ultimately led to yet another costly divorce. other adventures at the hands of ruthless mercenary women <laughs> brought my client to the brink of ruin and forced him much against his will your honor i must object this man <laughs> sorry your honor no objections much against his will, to borrow money from his own real estate business, which he has since repaid and which he now regrets. Uh, I mean, he regrets the borrowing, not the repaying. And I ask your lordship to put yourself in my client's position and imagine yourself beset on all sides by scheming, ambitious women, forced into dishonesty, and to deal as leniently as you can with this unhappy, exploited man. I suppose we must. Two years. But my lord! Oh, suspended, of course. We will now adjourn for lunch. Well, sir, we virtually won the case, didn't we, sir? Yes, of course. But what does it mean? Suspending sentence. You're free. I think I did pretty well for you. Of course, uh, paying the money back did make a difference. But by the way, how did you manage to get hold of it? The 30,000, I mean. Um, shall we say a rather wealthy lady? Yes, I suppose with all your experiences, you have learned a trick or two. Yes, it's been a costly education. 30,000 back for a three million investment. However, I shall now sit back and reap my reward, as they say. Really? Oh, thank you. What exactly have you in mind? There's still one or two details to be sorted out. Yes, of course. I'm sure there are. I've already put several advertisements in different periodicals. Let me get this straight. A school for sex, eh? It might work. Of course it will. Dear old chap, I've been conned swizzled and seduced by some of the loveliest, cleverest birds in the world. I think I must know just about every trick that there is to know for lifting money from the unsuspecting male.
Now, if I impart this knowledge to, say, half a dozen girls to start with, on a commission basis of, say, 33 and a third percent, can you see the potential? Oh, by the way, where we're going, I think, um... <laughs> yes? <laughs> One thing I've learned about my fellow men, and don't think I'm alone in my vulnerability, is a truth, and it's simple. The shrewdest, toughest, hardest businessmen in the world have got one great weakness. One Achilles heel, one chink in their armor. And that is... Oh. Crumpled. Sex. Quite, quite. Take this girl here, for example. Unsubtle, I grant you, but watch her. And watch her audience. You might learn something.
problems I haven't surmounted yet is uh, how to obtain the right pupils. Oh, well, I think I might be able to help you there. I have a friend who's a probation officer. I think I could get you a regular supply. Really? Uh, for a commission, of course. Would you like me to make some inquiries? Um, discreetly. Of course. <laughs> in business. You can take the covers off now. Glad to see you back, sir. You know, I really thought you would have gone her for a couple of years at least. Do you know, sir, Wingate Manor has had a master for the last ten generations. Oh, I remember dear Jonathan Wingate, your grandfather, sir. He very nearly did time because... Yes, he... quite. But now it's time to think of work. We've got to earn some money, Fred. Think about paying your wages, eh? That's all right, sir. Don't you bother about me. Anything on for lunch, Fred? Made some soup, sir. Quite frankly, I wasn't expecting you. Mmm, excellent. Your cooking qualifications will come in handy. What do you mean, sir? Oh, I've got lots of little surprises for you, Fred. You'll know all those jolly little pictures you've got tucked away in your cupboard. Well, you wait and see what's going to happen down here very soon. <laughs> What is it, sir? Don't worry. I'll soon show her off. No, just a minute, Fred. I think this might be the lady I'm expecting. Our new deputy headmistress. She don't look like a schoolmistress to me, sir. <laughs> well, she's got rather, shall we say, um, special qualifications. Show it, will Fred? Very good, sir. chefs for us, and, um, anyway, now that we're in the kitchen, perhaps a cup of coffee? An enchanting idea. Or perhaps something a little stronger. Much better. Brandy, please. Mm. Uh, Fred, a large brandy for the Duchess, and uh, a dry martini for me. Uh, a martini and a large brandy for Her Grace. Uh, certainly, sir. Now, Duchess. You wrote to me in answer to an advertisement in the Times. I note in your letter that your husband, the Duke, died in 1966. Now, what have you been doing since then? Oh, dear Archie, yes. It took some time spending, I mean, uh, tying up his estate. Such a lovely man. You know, it was the publicity and the news of the world that killed him. Oh, <laughs> interesting. You have experience uh, with girls, yes? Your large brandy, madam. Your martini, sir. Thank you, Fred. Cheers. <laughs> that will be all, Fred. That will be all, Fred. <clears throat> now, Duchess, you were saying your experience with girls. Yes, indeed. The windmill. 
I was her girl there, you know. Then the Lido in Paris. And after that, I had my own modelling school. A big success that was. Until those wretched girls let me down. Let you down? Yes, the papers played it up, of course. Called it the Cabinet Cuddles Affair. You'll probably remember it. Everybody else does. It was in uh, 1956. No, I, I can't say I do. Nothing, really. After a late debate on the budget of the House of Commons, some of the MPs had to stay overnight. When the morning came, nobody could find their clothes. It was that Ursula that took them. I never did like the girl. Well, anyway, 23 of my girls happened to be there at the time. Quite innocently, of course. Nobody believed them. That's how I met Archie. He was Minister for Internal Affairs at the time. We were both completely exonerated. Absolutely fascinating. <coughs> oh, well, Duchess, I think that we can say that your application has been successful. Now, before we discuss your percentage, I mean your salary, I think I should give you some details of the school and your duties. Now, at this moment, on its way from London, is a minibus containing a group of girls. <laughs> Clappy, this isn't the way to Holloway. Please, call me Mr. Clapp. We're not going to Holloway. You've been paroled. We're going to Wingate Manor, a new approved school. Are you coming with us, lover? Oh, go on. Are you alone, Beppo? Is that the best you can do? Hope we've seen your time. Shh, be quiet. <laughs> Are you okay, Harry? Are you kidding? Yeah, what's all this about Wingate Manor? Some new school they're taking us to. Progressive rehabilitation or something. Oh, yeah? Well, we've got to get you all out of here before we get there. Don't let him suspect anything. I'll think of something. What's going on back there? Nothing, Nothing Mr. Mr. Clapp, sir. Where are we? I just passed a small village. Don't know what it's called. Anybody about? No. Well, if you see somebody, let me know. I've got an idea. Just pass the copper. He ain't good. Bloody marvellous. Get Clap to stop the bus. Throw a faint or something. You're mad with a copper? Do it quickly, girl. You bet, you do it. Oh, oh my God. God. Do it anything. Come on. Matter. Come on. One, two, three. Oh! What's going on? She's fainting. It must be the car drive. It affects some people like that. What's the trouble? What's going on? She needs an aspirin and a glass of water. Yes. Look, there's a house over there. They'll help. Where? Through the trees. I can't see any house. Of course there is. My eyesight's better than yours. I'll go. Oh, no, you don't. I'll go. And remember, no funny business goes. I'm going to lock you in. Get undressed. Everything? Yeah, everything. I'll tell you what to do while I'm picking the lock. Hurry. Come on, hurry. Oh, I got stuck. Come on, hurry up, girls. I've done it.
There's no sign of the house here. Costumes, you said. Take those clothes off, you said. And then you attack us. Yes, you're just a dirty, dirty, dirty old Don't man. Don't do that. No, 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 then. Is this man annoying you? Yes, officer. Thank goodness you're here, officer. This man just set on us. All we want was a lift, then he makes a strip like this. Oh, absolute nonsense, Sergeant. My name is Horace Clapp, and I'm a probation officer of the Crown. A <laughs> likely story. Do you have any credentials, sir? Why, of course, I I thought something like this would happen when I saw this fellow pick up these hitchhikers, officer. Ah, are you a witness, sir? Yes, I was walking along the road when I saw this fellow scouring the curb. He was obviously looking for an easy pickup. And eventually I saw him pick up these four young ladies. Absolute nonsense, Sergeant. Here are my credentials. This, sir, is a membership card for the Raymond Review Bar. Oh. <coughs> yeah. Ah, this seems to be in order, sir. Are these four girls in your care, sir? Yeah, yes, Sergeant. Uh, you know, these girls would do anything to evade justice. I, I, I'm, I'm taking them to Wingate Manor. You see, uh, and I, I trust you'll allow me to go unhindered and forget this little incident. It wouldn't look good on my record. Wingate Manor, sir? That's right. Well, I suppose it's all right. See you at Wingate Manor. All right, girls. Come on. Into the bus. All right, come on, come on, come on. Why now you got it? Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you, man.
you in the street. I said to myself, to me, son, I said, that is the most beautiful bird that you've ever seen in your life. And you must have her, I said. Have me? Yes. Have you for me travel and strike me wife. But such a lovely bird with such beautiful feathers. <coughs> must be caught it very, very carefully. So let me call my beautiful one. Give me those lips that I yearn for, night and day. Go away, go away! Let me sample the rich flavour. Mr. Wingate! Mr. Wingate, help! Mr. Wingate! <coughs> Mr. Wingate! Mr. Wingate, help! I, I say, what's going on here? Why? Is this your old woman then? Well, no. Oh, oh, I, I say, uh, Duchess, please. would you like to tell me what all this is about? Mr. Wingate, this oaf followed me from the village and then started to molest me. I insist that you call the police. Well, no, I don't think there's any need for that. Now, if you'd like to just sit down and tell me your name. Hector. Hector Shaughnessy. says. see. Si. And you live and work in the village, yes? Oh, no. I live up at the big house, but uh, no work for us while it's around here. Uh, here. You couldn't give me a joke, could you? Well, I'm afraid I haven't any use for a prize fighter either. Unless... Are you any good at PT? No, that's her gun. I don't mean that sort of PT. Oh. I meant physical training. Yes, I spell with all of them. Bruce Walker, Tommy Fowl. I swap punches with the best of them. That is only too painful and obvious. Mr. Wingate, you're not serious. Well, he might be useful. And cheap. Now look, Hector, if I take a chance on you, will you promise me one thing? To leave the Duchess here alone. Five litre, five litre, just to be, just to be breathing the same air as her, just to be feeling the... Quite, quite. Now, you go off home, smarten yourself up, and come back here tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, and I'll tell you your duties. Sir, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank oh, and you. Hector. Yes, sir. Don't tell anybody in the village that you're working here, will you? And don't forget your condition of employment. My lips will be so. School? <laughs> you think so, Fred? <laughs> now stay here and don't move. I won't be long. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm going to find a hand. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Winnegan? That's correct. Could I have a word with you, sir? Of course. In private, sir? Oh, yes, yes. Um, Fred. Will you go and take the girls' suitcases and put them upstairs in the bedrooms, and then when you've done that, bring the girls all downstairs into the main hall? Certainly, sir. You? Thank you. Now, Mr. Clamp, what can I do for you? Well, Mr. Bellage didn't say it was going to be like this, sir. You've had difficulties, Mr. Clamp? Well, oh, tell me, um, why aren't all the girls undressed? They're a bunch of hooligans, sir. They try to escape. Oh, oh I, I don't think I can do this very often. <laughs> Nonsense, Mr. Clapp. When you see the lovely lolly that you're going to make, you won't be able to get those girls down here fast enough. Young, young ladies, sir. Ah, show them in, will you, Fred? Certainly, sir. This way, ladies. Hmm. 
A most interesting bunch of girls. Uh, Mr. Clapp, will you? Oh, oh, oh yes, sir. Yes. Uh, this is Sally Regan. She was probation to me for two years for shoplifting. Persistently. Naughty. You have to do better than that, don't you? This is Judy Arkwright. Third offence. Stole 140 pounds from an elderly gentleman. Worked in a near beer joint. Oh, good work. Really good. This is Beth Villiers. Involved in some sort of land fraud. I don't know much about it, I'm afraid. Excellent. You must uh, tell me the details sometime. Is that all, Mr. Clapp? I yes. thought there were four girls. Oh, my God. Yes, the ringleader. Sue Randall. Where's Sue Randall? Well, Sue Randall, do you want to do a bunk for it now, or what? What's the point, Harry? we just become a girl on the run, and you'd cop it too for aiding and abetting. No, the best thing to do is to stick it out and hope the police get hold of that swine, Ronnie Lambert. If he's any decency at all, he'll kill me. Sir Randall! Sir Randall! Sir Randall! Where are you? Come on, don't stop any tricks. Where are you? 18 months for something you didn't do. I told you not to get mixed up with that Lambert crowd. Even I didn't know he was pushing acid in such a big way. You live and learn. Anyway, there's nobody else to get mixed up with. I was around. I was around all the time, but you didn't see me. Yeah, I know. You better go, Harry. You don't want to be found here. What for? I'm not doing anything wrong. I've been going straight for three years now. Well, at least you better get get dressed. Uh, get Sue a rest thrill. Sue Randall, where are you? It's no use trying to hide. We'll find you. Where are you? It's all right, Mr. Wingett. I found her. And you, young man. What do you think you're doing? Well, I say, don't you feel a bit cold like that? Don't you think you ought to get dressed? I think you should allow me to punish them, sir. The girl should be spanked and the boy should be... Don't I know you? I thought I recognized something. Not you, the suit. Oh, yes, I remember. Lady Swithin's gardener. Same old story, made off of the silver. She was probation to me. Now, look. I paid that debt. I'm straight now. Do you have a job? No. Do you want one? As a gardener? Well, that would be your official capacity, but... Um... Sleeping in? Yes. In my room, huh? Oh, just so that I can keep an eye on you. Oh. Okay. Well, come on, then. Fred! Oh. Coming, ma'am! Uh, uh, sir! You four girls are the first pupils at Wingate Manor. Now, our object is to provide you with an education that will enable you to take your place as leading members of our society. Mr. Wingate. Yes? Could I ask you what were those contracts that you asked us to sign? Ah, yes. Yes, I was just coming to that. Now, you will realize that the education that you will undergo here will be of a most unique nature. As such, it will be very expensive. But the benefits that you will reap as a result of this should be substantial. Of course, you will understand that I want the school to benefit as well. So, in fact, what you have done is just sign over one-third of your future earnings to me. <laughs> now, I should like to introduce you to your teachers. Duchess, this is the Duchess of Burwash. Now, she will instruct you in a number of subjects under the heading of technique. Good evening, girls. Hector, <clears throat> and this is Mr. Shaughnessy, <gasps> who will instruct in deportment. Pleased to meet you, girls. Two hours 
sweet when the product is all steamed up. Ah, oh, don't keep on at me, Ethel. How would you like to have walked six miles? Seems a bit funny to me. I wonder what they're all doing at Wingate Manor. You ought to find out, you know. Ah, I ought to, but I don't think Mr Wingate particularly welcomes me up there, you know. Why not? You're only doing what you were paid to do. Well, I felt so guilty last time when I had to go up there and arrest him. Wingates have been in this county for centuries. So it's, I always feel they're above the law, them sort of people. Why don't you just go up there and snoop around without him knowing? Yeah, I think I will. Yeah, probably nothing in it. But don't say nothing to anybody, though. Oh, dear. What's up? Mr. Roberts. The Colonel? Oh, no, you didn't tell him. Well, Mrs. Roberts was in the kitchen. I only mentioned... Ethel, how many times have I got to tell you, especially the Colonel? You know he's daggers drawn with the Wingate family. Figures he ought to have been the squire of the village. Still, I dearly love to know what's going on up Wingate Manor. I think that's about right. Now this is your millionaire. And this is your dining room with the Carlton in Cannes. But how do I get to Cannes in the first place? My dear, if you don't know how to get a one-way ticket to the south of France, I don't know why we're bothering. I want you to play it by ear. Now, Fred. You know how to react. Oh, I'll do my best, ma'am. Right. Now begin. Wiggle, dear, wiggle. What you've done. Oh, it took me hours to dress as well. Oh, my dear, I'm so sorry. Allow me. No, no, that won't help. I shall have to go and change. Good. Good. Oh, dear. My roommate has the keys and she won't be back for hours. What am I going to do? Excellent, excellent. It'll be my privilege to allow you to dress in my room. Oh, thank you, sir. Could I ask you to be so kind and come with me? Just in case one of the porters thinks I'm breaking in. Of course, my dear. Marvellous. Very good indeed. Now comes the kill. Now this is your millionaire's room. There is the door. Take up your positions, both of you. Well, Harry, you're supposed to be hiding away behind the sofa. Sue, you'll come over here and join me. Now enter. Come along, my dear. I'll uh, wait in the bathroom while you undress. It doesn't matter, sir. I'm sure you've got daughters much older than me, and you're far too much of a gentleman. Quite, quite. Why don't you sit down? Uh, thank you, my dear. Tease him, dear. Tease him. Marvellous. Very. Oh, not at all bad. A bit corny, perhaps, but still worth a quick 5,000, according to the age of the punter. Fred! Oh. You all right? It's, it's my heart, ma'am. Blood pressure, you know. Goodness, what's that? No, 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 dear. Never make it appear as though it's vicious. Play on the punter's masochism. I'll start again. I'll just I'll get, I'll get off my back. Get off the back. That's it. I'll sit on the side of the bed there. All right? Now start at the top again. The neck. Gently. Now. Bigger. Harder. Deeper. That's it. Nice, nice. Now down, down towards the ribs. Down towards the ribs. Lovely. Harder, press, press, that's it, yes, yes. Now, gently, up towards the top of the neck again. Now begin to work down the spine. 
gently down the spine. Now this is it. This is where you're lulling him into a sense of false security. Right down, right down, right down. Now, quickly, a couple of rabbit punches to the spine. That's it. Feel that lovely into the ribs. That's it. Now, now, start on the left leg. On the left leg. That's it. Massage gently, gently. You're lulling him again. That's it. He doesn't think anything's going to happen. Now, take it down to the knee. To the knee. That's it. Now, one hand under the ankle. Grab it up. That's it. That's it. The submission hold. You've got it. That's it, darling. Lovely. Ah, 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 ah. Ah. Everything okay up here, Mr. Wingate? Oh, yes, yes. Judy's doing fine. All right, my dear. You can relax the leg. That's it. Uh, you go downstairs now and join Hector's class for PT. Oh. How's your Beth doing? Very good indeed. I've sent her out to Hector's class. <sighs> yes, he's doing very well. Open your leg, darling. Put him right up behind your chest. Come on. Right up. Right up. Now, ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. You look like an old bag of bones, Beverly. Hold him up. Come on. Stretch right up. Stay the feet together. Stretch right up. One, two, down. Up. 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 That's it. Hand down by your side. There we go, right down to the ground this time, on each side of your feet. Hands above your head. One! Two! One! Two! One! Two! Hands above your chest. This is swift, right out. Ready? One! Two! Stretch up, Sue, put that tummy in, Sue. What are you laughing at? Put your tummy right in. Hold your backside in. That's it. Hands above your head. Ah, good morning, Sergeant. Colonel Roberts, what brings you up here, sir? Well, the wife told me there was something interesting going on. I take it you're investigating? I'm not making no investigation, sir. This is my routine, Reigns. You can't fool me, Sergeant. I know there's something fishy going on. That bounder Wingate ought to be locked up. Mark you, all the family are the same, you know, for generations. No, no, Colonel. We can't run around making accusations like that. We've got to be sure of our facts. Well, that's as maybe. But I'm going to do a bit of investigation on my own. And when I've got my facts, I'm going to pounce. Good day, Sergeant. Good day, sir. Now, girls, an advanced class in a more difficult situation. This is the big killing, and you need far greater care. Young men obviously make the best husbands. Unfortunately, they're always reluctant to pay for uh, services rendered, so we don't give it to them. Oh, I know all about this permissive age, but what we said in the 50s is true now. Once they've had you, they'll never marry you. So now, Harry, I've told you what to do. And Sally, you are just arriving at this young man's Chelsea flat. The object is to prevent him from seducing. Now go on, take up your position. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together to join this man and this woman in holy matrimony. No, 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 no. I'm a sick man. I'm a dying man. I'm a dying man, I tell you. I'm a... I tell you, I'm a dying man! Nonsense! Dearly beloved, we are gathered together to join this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Now look, gals, if you can't get the old boy to the altar quicker than that, he's going to drop dead on you. Now go back and start it all over again. <clears throat> Dearly beloved... I don't think we've got this quite right, Miss Sally. Come on, get dressed. We've got a lot of work to do yet. Now, Rudy, bring them back. Bring this chest right out. Ready? One, two, three. Now, dear, 
I don't think we've got this quite right. You'll have to give him a little more passion, otherwise he'll lose interest. Try again. Okay. That's enough bloody passion. Lay off. Thank you very much. All right, see you again soon. soon. See you later. Come along, girls. And give your bag to Chris, will you? Thank you, Chris. Right, you. Damn nettles. Three months, Sergeant. Three months. What are you going to do about this scandal? I don't see there's anything I can do, sir. I'll have to know a lot more about this. Have to know a lot more about it? Well, I'm going to whip up a petition. Oh, all right, sir, just as you like. Well, girls, this is it. You've been with us for three months now. It's time for you to go and face the outside world. I shall always hold a very special place in my heart for you, my first, and I'm sure my most successful pupil. I know that you'll capture the hearts of many unsuspecting males just as easily as you've captured mine. And now Hector will drive you to the station, from whence you will go your separate ways. Bravo, bravo! <clears throat> Goodbye, my dear. Go. Do honor to your school. And may God bless you all. Goodbye, sweetheart. Just take them any. Don't marry any of them, huh? Don't worry, Harry. Look after yourself. See you soon. Come on, girls. I will miss the train. very attached to those girls. Ah oh, well, Duchess, let's bring in the newcomers. Now that we've got the introductions over, I think it'd be a good idea if you were to disrobe straight away. We um, have a very scientific approach here. This will enable your teachers to peruse your natural talents and therefore to give you the most beneficial and individual attention. <laughs>
very nice bunch of girls this time. I believe they are better than the last lot. Fred, you're supposed to be sweeping the floor. Yes, sir. Now, what about this one? Aha! Twenties look. Very nice, my dear. I'm using that, because this one's much more with it. This is absolutely, you know, present day, right. isn't it? Right. We can build up the colouring, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. I think a little extra continental training for this one, don't you, Duchess? Should do very well on the Via Veneto. Oh! <laughs> Reacts well, too. Mm -hmm. okay. Hector! Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Do something about this, will you? Yes, sir. Mm. Now, you're going to work out. You're going to do plenty of chest exercises. Something like this. Now you try it. Now you're going to do that half hour every day. Every day you're going to do that. Well, Duchess, if you'll just organize the contracts for the new girls. Of course. I think I'll be off to bed. I'll be up later. Sergeant? Ah, double-faced blackguard. What are you going to do about him? Well, there ain't nothing I can do, sir, unless he breaks the law. Nearly 300 guests attended the wedding yesterday of London model Beth Villiers to Sheik Abdul Ubla Odoto, the Kuwait oil magnet. Miss Villiers, looking charming and composed, told our reporter that her success on the international scene had been mainly due to the training she had received at the little-known Wingate Manor Finishing School. Mm, but by the way, we got a large cheque from her this morning. Oh, that's quick. Why don't she fiddle the budget for her trousseau? Yeah, I'm not quite sure that I like all this publicity, you know. I mean, look at this thing in the paper yesterday about young Sally. Where are we? Oh, yes. Sally Regan, much in the news recently with her on-off, on-romance with horror film producer Sidney Myers, has signed a seven-year contract with a rival film company. It was reported that she negotiated the entire deal herself without any help from her agent. She added that her financial know-how had been acquired at Wingate Manor, an exclusive finishing school for girls. And then there was, there was young Sue the other day, not content with that £20,000 settlement out of court from the defence minister, tells them that it was all due to us. She was helping. I can't be Yes, Principal Wingate Manor speaking. I'm sorry, madam, I'm afraid we're full. I say you'll have to help me here. Some woman says she's read about us in the paper. She wants to send her daughter to us. Won't you take no for an answer? No. Well, stay with her. <coughs> um, madam, um, I'm very sorry. Yes, I know money talks, madam, but... Well, 400 guineas a term. What? Um, very well, madam. That fixed her? No, she's confirming in writing. Uh, Wingate Manor School for Girls. This is the deputy headmistress. I see. Well, I'm afraid we're full up. Oh, eight or ten years, I should think. Hold on a minute. I'll speak to the principal. I think this one's for you, it's by Count Snow. In for a penny, in for a pound. Four hundred guineas a turn. Will you confirm? Thank you, goodbye. I should have to think about this one. I hadn't envisaged this sort of problem. Perhaps we could burn the place down. Daddy, what a super place. Not for 
forget the religious side of education. Oh, good heavens, no, Bishop. <laughs> we cater for every denomination here. See. Come along, my dears, this way. <clears throat> Straight through. Up the stairs. There we are. In there, that's it. Ah, Mr. Windigate, I'd like to show you some interesting pictures of my daughter. Oh. When she was a little girl. <laughs> yes, I'd be most enchanted to see those. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> my, my. She has changed a lot, hasn't she? <laughs> Quite a big girl now. Thank you, sir. See you again. Goodbye. That should give you all you need. Sergeant, do your duty. Right, oh, sir. I'll have to phone the chief constable first, oh, sir. Right. I'll stay guard. It's the waiting I can't stand, Mr. Bennett. What did you want us for? No, stop fussing, Clap. I've just seen the Home Secretary. First, Sally Regan, making a fortune as a film actress. Then this, uh, what's her name? Sue Randall with that cabinet minister scandal. You've no idea how I had to lie myself out of that one. And now there's this Beth Villiers gallivanting all over Kuwait. These girls are supposed to be under lock and key. Well, no, no, sir. I mean, it's a very good school. Oh, I've only your word for that. I've never heard about this place, and neither do I find now have any of my colleagues. Nevertheless, these girls are still on probation, Berridge. What are you going to do about it? Yes? Put him through. Speaking. Oh, no. All right. I suppose that's all you can do. Right. I'll phone you back. That was the chief constable. Reports from the local police that your Wingate Manor is a brothel. Oh, my God. Oh, no, sir. Not exactly a brothel. It's a... Look, Berridge, you better get down there straight away. I'll do what I can to delay police action. Well, go on, man. Hurry up and save your skin. Okay, sir. And mine. But quiet now, girls, please. Quiet. Now, today we have several new girls with us. So I thought we'd start with something cheerful. A party that is extremely popular in the European capitals, particularly in Italy, is one that is more generally known as the Dolce Vita Orgy. Now, one point about this type of party, it is extremely difficult to tell the princes from the paupers, well, the rich man from the poor. And that will be the object of this lesson today. Everything all set, Sergeant? Yes, sir. We caught the others as they was travelling through the village. Good. Where are they? Here, sir. Sergeant, what is the meaning of all this? Why are we being arrested? These people are all the same, you know. If there were no customers, there'd be no immoral houses. Immoral houses? What do you mean, sir? Don't come the old acid, sir. You know very well what's going on in there. And what's more, you're the patrons. If that's so, officer, what am I doing here? Madam, just because we're country folk, don't think we don't know all about big city perversions. No, 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 girls. No, 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 no. Now look, I know he's got a big pectoral and all that, but he hasn't got any money. He's only the gardener's boy. Now, I'm going to show you how to discern the ones with the money. Good precious, Mr. Berridge. The police are here. Put yourself to get a clap. Come along, Sergeant. We're wasting time. All right, sir. Standing. You guard the prisoners. You two pass. Come with me. Now then, Jenny, which of these gentlemen sitting here would you say was the millionaire? That one. Now, why do you say him? Because he's fat. My dear, you don't necessarily have to be fat to be a millionaire. Now, what about our Frederick here? <coughs> Wendy, quick! Good, the place is surrounded. What the police, you, you fool? Don't know. 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 Don't
Henry Bryce Wingate, Hubert Robert Berridge, and Horace Clapp. You have been found guilty of conspiring to use the premises known as Wingate Manor for immoral purposes. I have listened very carefully to your defense and learned a lot from it. When I retire from the bench at the end of this month, I shall study this extraordinary case much more carefully and benefit by it. Have you anything to say before I pass sentence upon you? Good. I am sending you... May it please, Your Honour, I would like to enter a plea of mitigation. Sit down and be quiet. I am sending these men where they cannot be entering into any competition. I, 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 I mean, uh, where they will not be able to corrupt members of society. Now, you will each of you go to prison for a term of three years. Oh, no, I would like to take leave to appeal. Answers. We all adjourn for lunch. <laughs> don't worry. He can't do that. I'll get you out on appeal. I say, did you see that dirty look I gave him when he sentenced you to three years? <laughs>